Hi guys, so building on the previous uh, lecture, the previous playlist about simple harmonic oscillations, I'm going to try to cover in this playlist waves and sound, and these are the topics that I'm uh, going to try to cover. And I'm going to build on what we have discussed previously. So we talked about oscillators and what's going to happen when you have oscillators that are linked together. So for example, if you are making a wave here, so this is called a slinky, you see that the disturbance is moving and the energy is moving along at a given speed. So let's look again at these oscillators uh, that you can link together here. Follow the same basic principles. So you see here, this is called the wave machine. And you see how if you shake one hand, the disturbance here is moving along at a given speed. The speed will depend on the material here. And the speed depends on the restoring force for each oscillator. So that's one oscillator here. That's another one. And they are all linked together here at, uh, at the center. So the, the speed will depend on the restoring force and of course inertia, how, how much mass uh, each oscillator has. So I shake on one end and I'm gonna produce a disturbance that is moving at a given speed, but each oscillator here is not moving along, right? It stays the same place. So if you look at only one oscillator here, it's gonna move up and down in that case, in a simple harmonic motion, right? So you see, you can think of a string here, you are making a wave, and you can think of that as uh, being made of all those little oscillators linked together, and each of one of them will follow a simple harmonic motion, as you can see here. The same basic principles. And the Wherever anything back, makes waves, harmonic oscillators respond and then spring back. The oscillators are linked in such a way that every cycle of one excites the oscillator beside it. But what determines how fast the wave moves? So for example, if you have a, a rope or a violin string that you excite with a bow, can think of the string as being, being uh, made of all those little oscillators linked together. So that will be atoms, right? And how fast the, the wave it's going to move depends of on, on the physical property of your uh, instrument. So the string length and also on, on the restoring force, right? How, how fast those oscillators will spring back to the initial position. So if you have a, a string here, maybe it's for a guitar, you can think of this string made of all those little oscillators there, like all those atoms linked together, and you have an infinite number of oscillators. For masses connected by springs, the speed of the wave depends on the stiffness of the spring. So that will be the restoring force mass of each oscillator and the equilibrium distance between them. So we discussed that in the previous lecture. So it also depends of uh, the inertia. If it has a large inertia, it's going to decrease the speed and on the physical property of the medium where the wave is moving. Water, gravity is follow the same basic principles. Okay, so you have also this one. I think I already springs can oscillate along the direction that connects them. So that will be a longitudinal wave. You see that the molecules here are either compressed or stretched out, and it's a disturbance that is moving along. But each each little oscillator here does not move, it stays at the same place. So that would be, for example, a sound wave will work that way. 
These are called longitudinal waves. And they can also be made to wave sideways. These are called transverse waves. But water waves are neither longitudinal nor transverse. Instead, each bit of water on the surface moves around in a little circle, each circle slightly offset from the next. Altogether, giving the familiar undulation of the watery surface. Okay, don't ask me where there was a, why there was a foot there. <laughs> but uh, those videos come from Mechanical Universe, so I will put uh, the link in the, in, in the description. It's, um, it's a very good series. So um, in, in that vi video, you saw a wave machine which is a very famous demo in physics. And I have found like a funny thing to build for, for the kids, especially or for a science class, right? You can make a wave machine just uh, very easily with gummies and um, kebab stick here. It's a wave, it's a wave machine. Wave. It's a device I really like using in the classroom. Not I'm a teacher, teacher just, just like, like you. Like I teach sixth grade science. science. And if you're anything like me, you've wasted your playing time trying to find a just because it's fantastic for demonstrating wave phenomena, but because its construction is obvious, so students can see how it works. It's cheap to make and it's really pretty. As you so you can see the wave moving along and being reflected. So it's a very fun thing to build. So it's called the wave machine. Okay, so uh, another very good website here. What is a wave? You see that you can have a human wave. So in that case, you see that each human is not going anywhere, stay in place, but it's bringing back to its uh, original position. So there is a recoil force. And then of course, each human has a mass. So how fast the wave is going to move? Let's say they, they, they all have about the same mass. It depends how fast they're going to spring back and it depends on their inertia. But you see that the disturbance is moving along, but each person here is staying at the same place. Likewise, you can have a sound wave here. So this is just a sound wave. And you see that it's, um, it's the air molecules that are moving back and forth around the initial position, but they are not going anywhere, right? So if you look at one particle here, you see how it's following a simple harmonic motion, right? It's passing on the disturbance to the next one, but it's not going anywhere. So we'll talk more about sound wave, but you see that basically it's made of um, air being compressed, compression, and air being stretched out, rarefaction. So you have high pressure here of air, low pressure of air, high pressure, relative to the atmospheric pressure. You can have a rock, a string, and, and you can make a wave that will move along at a given speed. So, I think the next thing I want to show you, uh, sound website. Here, so this is a string, or it could be a slinky that works well with slinky, for example, if you want to do demonstrations, if they are very cheap to buy. And I'm going to put a no damping here, high tension. And I'm going to make a small, small pulse, just one pulse. Oh, by the way, I can make a pulse. Let's make a pulse. Uh, let's make a small pulse. A small amplitude here, boom. So it keep going back and forth because there was no dumping, 
Notice what's happening when it's uh, reflecting here. So if I if I go slow motion, when it's being reflected, it's uh, out of phase. The phase change. So it's 180 degrees out of phase, right? It's symmetric uh, relative to this axis here. So this is called the um, transverse wave, okay? Because the disturbance is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. But you see, you see the wave moving back and forth. Now, interesting, if I make a loose hand here, see what's going to happen. So it's moving. Boom. And now there is no change in phase, right? So it has exactly the same shape. If I have a fixed hand, now it's going to go up and it was down before. So it's a one. It's a reflection about the x-axis, right? Now I could, uh, if no, what's interesting, you see the tension, the tension, the wave of the speed depends on the tension. You know how fast each oscillator is springing back. It also depends on its uh, inertia. So if I go low tension, you see what's happening, even in normal. So low tension, it's moving very slowly. And if I increase the tension, it's going to move faster. So the speed of the wave on, on a string here depends on the tension. So it's uh, equals to the square root of the tension divided by the mass per unit, ma uh, unit length. So we're going to see that. So don't worry about that. But we, we could, we could, um, We can compute uh, the speed, the speed of the wave, right? So I need a ruler here. It's going to start here. I'm going to go for five meters. I need a timer. Okay. I need my calculator. And I want to make a very small bump. No, that didn't work. No damping. The ruler. Uh, timer. Stop. So, stop. So about four, four seconds, right? So four seconds for five centimeters. So it means Five centimeter, five centimeter divided by about four. So it's about 1.25 centimeter per second. So 1.25 centimeter per second. So you can see, you can find uh, the speed. I can have no end. And then the pulse here moves along and does not come back. No, I can have it um, here. Again, that website here, interesting website. You see that the speed of the wave on the string depends on the tension. So it's like uh, how fast the one, the, the, how fast it will come back. So all, all those little oscillators, how fast it's go, it's going to come back to the same position because it's being pulled by the next one. And it depends also on inertia, so mass per unit length. So if, uh, if you think, if you go back to here, if you think of that like just one particle with just one mass, this, this is one unit of length and you have the mass. Okay, so it depends on that mass here and how fast it springs back. Okay, so what you see here, if, uh, if this is tightened here, when it's reflecting the, the wave, the pulse is 180 degrees out of phase. If you have a soft boundary, so it means it's not tightened, it's kind of loose, you see, it does not, it does not have a phase change. 
also interesting here when you have a wave and then you see you are changing the density. So here it's heavier. So now you have some of the wave will keep going. Some of the wave will be uh, reflected. So you have some reflection with a change in phase and you have some of, some of the wave will keep going. Or you can have the opposite here. So, a lot of physics here. So, this is just an introduction. So, this is a great website for uh, simulation. I will put the link in the description. Okay, so there is another one that you, that you can find on the FET website. So, it's a simulation as well. And you have a speaker. And... You see, it's going to make a sound wave, okay? You cannot hear the sound, but you see how the, the wave is moving moving along. And I, I can find, again, I can find the speed of sound. So let's... Okay, so the idea is to start when the first first wave this the the first front each zero from zero to five so let's try to do that stop stop zero point zero one four seven about so you divide five divided by zero point zero one four seven and you have about 340 meters per second, right? Okay, so 340. So the speed of sound, the speed of sound in air, okay, is about, it depends on the temperature, but it's about 340 uh, meters per second. So the way you can um, remember is that it's five seconds, about five seconds in one mile. So if if you hear thunder, if you hear thunder, so you're gonna see the lightning first because of course light goes really fast. And then if you count five seconds and then you hear the noise, that means the thunder is one mile away. So the speed of sound depends on the temperature so we we have seen that in a previous uh, previous playlist but that's that's going to be the equation and the speed is in meter per second and this is in degree celsius the temperature is in degree celsius okay so it's a very nice app you see the the, the waves moving Okay, so just an introduction. Um, okay, so we did that. So you see when you are shaking, okay, the disturbance is going to move at a given speed, but each particle here, each oscillator wants to snap back to its position, spring back to its position. It's not going anywhere. Only the energy is moving. So a wave always carries energy along. So you have two kinds of wave. You have longitudinal wave and transverse wave. So I have uh, simulations for you. Let's see this one. So this one comes from a website. I, I like always to uh, give you the references, um, not this one. But uh, there is a website here and they, they have great simulations about physics and astronomy. So I will also put the link here. So anyway, let's look at that. In a longitudinal wave, the disturbance that makes up the wave is along the direction in which the wave travels. Longitudinal waves are also referred to as compression waves. In a transverse wave, the disturbance that makes up the wave is perpendicular to the direction in which the wave travels. So compression wave, 
longitudinal wave, that will be uh, the sound, sound. So another example here, the sound is a longitudinal wave. So here, for example, I have two types of seismic waves. So seismic waves, you, you have four types of seismic waves, but the one that can travel inside the earth are called S wave and P wave. So this is a secondary wave or shear wave because they come uh, second. And P wave arrive first. So when you have an earthquake, you have a seismograph and you look at the waves. This one arrives first, this one arrives second. So what you see is that the S wave is a transverse wave. So it's going to shake the inside of the earth this way. So the move, move the wave move in this direction, but the, the, the displacement is perpendicular. And then you have P wave. So P wave, the ground will be compressed and some, some other places it will be stretched out. Compress, stretch, compress, stretch, compress, stretch. So these are called P wave. So S wave here. And then you have P waves. So lesion, longitudinal and these are transverse waves. So those waves travel in Earth, inside the Earth. So for example, uh, when you have an earthquake, then you can have a P wave that will be longitudinal wave. You can have an S wave, which is transverse wave. And, and then you have waves that only travel on the surface, right? So it, it, they can, love wave will move the ground like in this like side, side way. And you have really wave, those waves here that will be like in a, like the water wave. So that's about seismic waves. Just just the parenthesis because it's still physics, interesting physics. Okay. So transverse wave here. And then water waves roll. Okay, so that means they have two components. They have a longitudinal component and a transverse component. So again, if you look at those Rally wa uh, wave here. It's, it's like rolling wave. And these, these two waves are, uh, very destructive because they are surface wave. So these, these are the ones who are going to destroy the building, the, the surface wave. So love wave and rally wave. So I guess they are not really love wave. So just um, any wave, including light, will have properties. Wave can be reflected. Okay, so it means it will come back to the same direction it was coming from. Or at least there will be an angle here, that angle here, incidence will be the same as the angle of reflection. They could be refracted when the wave goes from one medium to another medium with a different density, and wave can be diffracted, so it can bend around the corner. Okay, so I have an old playlist about optics, so I'm not going to go and talk about light, but even seismic wave, for example, can be reflected, it can be refracted, sound can be diffracted. So, so that's that's called a reflection. So I like to, to give you the example of seismic waves. So for example, if you have an earthquake here, you see all those seismic waves going to travel through the earth. So again, the some of them will only travel on the surface. So these are the love uh, love wave and highly wave, and they are very destructive. But some of the wave can be going through the inside of the earth. 
and they can be reflected. So this is a reflection and that's a reflection and they can be also refracted. So that means they go from one um, type of medium. So from the mental to the liquid outer core and out here. So these, these are P waves. Only P waves can travel for liquid. S waves will only travel for solid. Okay, so if you want to learn more, um, you can look it up here how seismic waves work, but you see, you can have reflection and you can have refraction. When there is refraction, they, they bend. Okay, that means they change the direction. So we use uh, seismic waves either because there is an earthquake or because we, we, we make an earthquake like uh, using TNT. And we use those waves to probe the inside of the earth. So that's how, that's how we know the structure of the earth. So it's a technology that was developed during, uh, during the Cold War, right? And then, and then it was used by science. Um, they use that technology to detect uh, nuclear, nu uh, nuclear tests. And then it was given to science. So scientists could use this technology to, to see what's inside the earth. Or you can also uh, look at the inside of a volcano, or you can look for oil, for example. So this is called seismology. So again, here I have found another website that explained that to you if you are interested um, go learning more about that here. So that, that will be the waves that you get on your seismograph. So first you're going to get the P wave and then you get the S wave. So primary wave and then secondary wave. Primary wave are longitudinal, secondary wave are transverse wave. So you see that uh, in, um, in red, I think it's in red, you have P or uh, S waves. Yes, S waves are in red and in A, yellow you have P waves. So you have the same thing here. So again, different types of seismic waves, very interesting to learn about that. So we can use reflection of waves, for example, if you want to know, you know, that if you, if you want to probe, Okay, it's called tomography. If you want to probe the ocean floor, how deep it is and what, what it looks like, the geography. So you're going to use uh, uh, P waves or, or pressure wave, right? So you, you're going to lose, um, uh, you, you, you have an explosive here. You're going to make a wave, a sound wave, and the sound wave will be reflected off the floor. And then you send that to a computer and, and you will have, you, you can map the, the floor of the ocean. So this, this is called a sonar. So reflection again, you can have that with a rope. Of course, we, we talk about that. Um, you see that. The, the, if the end is tightened, there is a change in phase. If the end is loose, there is no change in phase. So that will be for a wave on a string. Also, you can have reflection. You can have reflection with sound. You use um, ultra, ultrasound. Ultrasound meaning you cannot hear it with your ear. And it's, it's called a sonar. And it's, uh, the frequency is greater than 30 kilohertz. We cannot hear anything above 20 kilohertz. And if you are old like me, you cannot hear above, above about 15, 15 kilohertz. So light can be reflected. So that's how radar work. So radars, they were developed in uh, World War II. It was developed by the British. OK, 
okay, that's how they they were able to detect um, German airplanes trying to invade England, and it was uh, classified. It, then it was disclassified after the war, so it's called a radar. So it's uh, it's based on reflection as well. So they send a microwave, so an electromagnetic wave that will bounce back. So it's like echolocation. So you send a microwave, it's going to bounce back, it's going to bounce back. So you know the time it takes, you know the speed of flight because a microwave moves at the speed of flight, so you know the distance. So then after that, they develop what we call a stealth technology. So they change, they have those airplanes with a very weird look. So when you send the microwave, it will bounce in another direction. So it's like uh, invisible to radar. It's just an example. So again, sound wave can be reflected. So you have so many applications with the reflection of sound wave, right? So it's bounce back and then you can tell, you know, how, how deep is the well. Uh, Interesting fact here, if uh, you have an ellipse here, so this is a, a room in the shape of ellipse, it's a, in a Belfast, and um, you have the two foci of the ellipse. If you whisper, if you whisper here at one focus, it will perfectly reflect off the wall here. So the angle of incidence will be equal to the angle of reflection and it will bounce back exactly at one focus. So by the way, that's uh, if, you, if you learn about ellipses, that's how we make ellipses, right? That means this distance here plus that distance here, or this distance here plus that distance here is a constant. So it's a uh, it's very interesting uh, experience because you whisper, you speak very, very low, and, and you can hear if you are uh, sitting here. You have the same thing if you go to New York City. Uh, you have it's uh, it's in central. Um, it's in it's 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 in the train station, and um, uh, Grand Central at at the Grand Central train station. And you also have like if you sit at one corner, you can hear the person uh, at the other corner because it makes an ellipse. Okay, so again, this is the idea behind echolocation. So whales, for example, use echolocation. So it, okay, so the whales whales use sound to locate their prey, and they use this range in frequency for the sound. So, uh, so most most of that range here we can uh, we cannot hear the sound of of the whales. Bats also do the same thing. So this is called echolocation. So interestingly, when sound bounces off a wall, for example, there is no change in phase. So you see here, if you have high pressure here, when it's coming back, you still have high pressure. So you can see that in this app here, there is a wall and you see the sound moves and bounces off. Now, if you have, like we have discussed before, if you have a, a flute or um, if, you, if you have a clarinet, for example, when, when the sound arrive to the air and bounce off the air, so then there will be a 180 degrees uh, change in phase. So anyway, let's try to find, to answer this question here. So there is a person here, and there is a wall here. So there is a sound, sound wave. So I'm just showing you the propagation, the direction of propagation is moving in this way, and then it's bouncing back. And you have like uh, compression, rarefaction, compression, rarefaction, and so forth and so on. 
So no change in phase. So the distance will be 300 here, 300 here. So that's going to be 600 meters. The speed of sound is about 343 meter per second. So you can find the time. You use that equation here. So you see that the time will be the distance 600 divided by 343. So unit here is meter. This is meter per second. So the answer here will be in seconds. Another cool application is um, uh, with autofocus camera. So the, the camera will send uh, a pulse ultrasound that you cannot hear with your uh, ear, of course, so it will bounce back. So the electronics will be able to find the distance to the subject and it will uh, focus. And, and the weight is uh, so small that you won't notice. So for example, even if something is very close, like one meter away, so if you want to find the time it takes to bounce back, so it's going to be the time it takes to bounce back. So it's going to be V equals D over time. So the, the, the speed of sound 343 bouncing off, that's going to be two meters. So that's, that means that you have your camera here and that's your duck. It's a duck, I think. Okay. So it's going to, Bounce off, and that will be the time. So that means that the time will be uh, 2 divided by 343. Of course, it's going to be very small. Now, if the distance is 2 meters, it's still going to be very small. Okay, so it's going to be 40 here, 343. And I think you find something like 0 0.11. Second, so it's very small time. Okay, another application, the uh, cool, it's um, ultrasound. So ultrasound, ultrasound means uh, it's using this kind of uh, frequencies here, so we cannot hear them, and the waves will move in inside the fluid here, and it will bounce off tissue. And all the data are sent to a computer and you get, a, this is called tomography because with all the waves that are, you are highlighting using reflection, you have, you are highlighting the inside and the computer will be the image for you. So many other applications, for example, um, in a civil engineer, you, you, you can use ultrasound here to see if there is a fracture inside the building. Okay, so this is called not destructive evaluation. You can use ultrasound with a high amplitude to destroy kidney stone, for example. So a lot of applications using uh, reflection of sound. Okay, so let's do some problem. You can pause the video and try them. They, they are actually very easy. Uh, next time we'll talk about the math with sine waves. So let's try to do them. So for this one, it's an interesting problem. So those problems comes from that book here. It's a very nice book and it's conceptual physics, but it's very nice. More, more, I mean, not totally conceptual, but um, the math is easy. They just have very interesting problems where, where you learn about um, other domain of science. So here it's about uh, a volcano that erupted. It's a very famous eruption in 1883. So it says there was an eruption and that was the distance between the volcano. So the, so volcano here 
on an island terrible eruption. And the distance between here and Rodriguez Island, that distance here was 4,782 kilometers. How long did it take the sound to go from here to there? So you have two approaches. You can do a distance, the speed equals the distance divided by the time. The distance has to be in meters, so you have to convert that into meters, and that's going to be 343, and you can find the time. Or you know the distance in miles. And remember, one mile takes five seconds to cover for, for a sound. So the sound will take five seconds to cover one mile. So if you are 2970 miles, now that's going to be how many seconds? So it's an approximation, an approximation. So you can do, um, so you have to do 2970, okay, times five. So it's about this in second. So you have to divide by 3600 seconds and you get about about four hours. So if you if you do it this way, then you will get about the same thing. You have to convert to it's an approximation anyway. We don't know the temperature back then. So then it's one, two, three, and then time. So that's in meters. That's it's second. And this is in meter per second. You get about the same thing. So it's an approximation. It's about four hours. So you won't know about the eruption before um, four hours passed. So it says here the, the speed of sound. The speed of sound depends on the medium. Right? So here the speed of sound depends on the medium because uh, remember if it's in air, if it's in air, the molecules are far away from each other. So it will take them time to pass on the disturbance, right? So it, it will move slower. If it's in a liquid, the air molecule, uh, the molecules, the water molecules are closer to each other. So the oscillators are closer to each other. So the, the wave will move faster. Okay. So it's like in the previous video. If, if you make that, um, slinky here with masses and they are all linked together, remember that the speed of wave depends how close they are. How close they are to each other. It will depend on the distance between each of them. It will depend on that distance here. So the speed will be proportional to the distance between them, A, and then the restoring force here, and then the mass per unit length for slinky. So for a sound, it depends also on the distance between the molecules. So in the fluid, uh, the, 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 the sound will move faster. And of course, it depends how fast it's, it's going to spring back to the initial position. So anyway, if you look it up in the water, the, the speed of sound in water, it's going to be about, uh, it's not a T, K, it should be a K here. It depends on the stiffness of the spring here. So the speed of sound in water is uh, 1500 meter per second about, okay? So you have a school of fish. Okay, so I don't know, they are learning physics. It's a school of fish here. And so you send like a um, sound wave that will bounce off. Okay, so the time it takes to go forward and then backward is 0 
one second. So the distance, if this uh, distance is d, so the speed equals 2d divided by 0 0.01. So that must be equal to 1500, right? So the distance equals uh, 7.5 meters. If you solve for d. Okay? Okay, let's do the next one. So all those problems, again, they come from... Um, from the book here. Yeah. So it's nice because you see all the application that you can have. So it's a snowy, snowy day. Snow, we see snow. And you have um, you have your sensor here and it's gonna send a ping and it's uh, bouncing off the ground. So it's going through the snow. And that distance here is five meters. That will be the distance here, um, and that will be the distance. Uh, no, yes, above the ground. Okay, so that's above the ground. No, sorry. So you see, don't stop the video. You want to make sure to read exactly what it says here. It says that the sound is reflecting off the snow. So that will be the distance D. Okay, that's much better. So it's go back and forth, and the time is 0 0.03 seconds. So we need the speed of sound. So the speed of sound is so I'm gonna use the equation so it's gonna be three three one and you have a square root of one plus minus twenty degrees Celsius divided by two seventy three. So that's the equation because if you decrease the temperature the air molecules are not going to move that fast so they cannot pass on the disturbance as fast. By, by the way, the speed of sound, the speed of sound is the speed of the random motion of, of the particle. If so, if they are moving really fast, it's very hot outside, so the sound will move fast, faster. So if you, if you do that, you get about 319 meters per second. So it's much, much less than the 343. So it's bouncing off here. So then, uh, so distance, so the speed is the distance of so 2g divided by 0 0.03. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, seconds. So then we have 2g equals 319 times 0.03, and then you divide by 2, right? So it's going to be um, 319 times 0 0.03, and then you divide by 2. So it's the distance is 4.785. So that's 4.785. So we can find this. And of course, it's not on scale. So that's about 0 0.215 meters. So it's about 21.5 centimeters. So again, it comes from that. Okay, so next time I will uh, do the math, a little bit of math. And uh, so today I'm going to stop here.